Good morning. I'm John Kish, President and CEO of Wise Technology, the inventor of and market leading company in the thin computing space. What I'd like to start off with is showing you something that thin computers are not supposed to be able to do. What we're going to see over the next 10 years for thin client computing is that it's going to move beyond desktops in the enterprise. We're going to see thin client-like devices embedded into televisions and other consumer electronic devices. We're going to see computing resources spread all around us. They're just going to be smaller, uh, lighter, thinner, cheaper machines um, that are more mobile um, and accessible to more people. We'll see thin client type technology embedded into smartphones, embedded into PDAs, embedded into other handheld gadgets we can't even imagine. You're going to see things that are built into your clothes. You're going to see things that are built into your homes and your offices. When the network is persistent, then the device or the ability to access the network will become just an inherent part of living. What was significant about that video is that all of the video processing was actually done in silicon on a thin client. As networks become more and more powerful, we will find that the devices which run in those networks will continue to simplify. In the case of WISE, we have simplified thin computers down to a single multi-core chip, which supports advanced multimedia, like you just saw, peer-to-peer -peer communication, and a variety of other things. This is significant because it allows us to provide the PC experience without compromise at a fraction of the cost. The advantages that we will reap from this come not just from the hardware platform, but rather from an intelligent software architecture, which is designed to legislate where processing occurs in a network and which optimizes the experience for the end user. With that, I'd like to turn this over to my colleague, Matt Alfano, who's going to show us some of what this new N10 platform is capable of. Thanks, John. Uh, as John mentioned, we've actually uh, already demonstrated the power and seamless computing experience of the N10 architecture. The desktop that you see is actually a virtualized PC running on a server in the pavilion. And the video touting the benefits of thin computing was actually presented in an RDP session without the traditional quality and performance issues that are normally associated with thin clients. There's nothing proprietary or secretive about the transfer protocol used in the connection to the virtual PC. It's simply the RDP protocol from Microsoft that traditional thin clients use today. What makes this architecture novel is how we make that connection and where we process different types of data. As John mentioned, at the heart of the platform is a multi-core system on a chip that, unlike traditional x86-based processors, can encode and decode multimedia of all varieties in the silicon itself. On the device side, we coupled the chipset with Wise Thin OS, our purpose-built operating system for thin computing, giving you a very secure, fast, easy to use, and dare I say, thin computing platform. And on the server side, we have Wise Virtual Desktop Extensions, which acts as an intelligent buffer between the virtual PC and the N10 on the network, determining whether certain pieces of data are best processed by the server hardware and sent via RDP, or directly to the N10 for processing locally by the system on a chip. As you can see from this PC, this is my work environment. I'm running a standard installation of Windows XP Professional. I have Internet Explorer and Office 2007 applications. These are not hosted applications either. They're running locally and natively on the virtual PC. Not only does this feel like my PC, it is my PC. It's simply running in a virtualized state in the network. Now I'll disconnect from this PC, bringing you to the uh, local environment of the N10 itself. As you can see, I have a number of possible connections that I can make from this single device. So let's connect to my personal PC, which is also running in a virtualized state on the data center. And this PC, it's customized for my personal taste. I have uh, Firefox. I have Google Desktop. It's 50 degrees in San Jose right now, um, and additional multimedia content. The nice thing about this platform is it doesn't just process movies and videos better than others. It hardware encodes and decodes uh, all sorts of multimedia codecs, including those that are used in voice over IP and video conferencing applications. In the pavilion at Booth 60, we have a voice over IP demo where any of my virtual PCs running through an N10 can connect to one another via an industry-leading soft phone and SIP server application. 
In addition, I'll let anyone in the audience hook up their XP-based laptop to our network and connect to any of the virtual machines I've shown here today. I guarantee that the N10 will outperform any laptop in the audience. John? Thanks, Matt. As I mentioned, there are three trends which we believe drive the acceptance of this technology into the marketplace. The first is undeniable. It is the power of the network. The second is an economic imperative that is in front of us, which is to lower the overall cost of providing computing to people wherever they are. The third is a social imperative. As the networks become more powerful, more and more people choose to connect to it, and we need to be able to provide a platform which allows them to do that, not just in the United States and Europe, but throughout the world, especially in developing countries. It is technology like this, when coupled with the software architecture that we mentioned, which will allow us to achieve the goal of providing affordable computing to everyone. Affordable computing, which is exactly the same as the computing you have on your desktop today. Thank you very much. Thank you.